everybody. My name is Matthew, uh, as it says on the slides. And the fact that this is kind of stretched out uh, is making me a little bit crazy um, because one of my interests is typography. Um, so this is kind of like, I'm, I'm cringing a little bit, but it'll, it'll be okay. Um, so today we're going to talk um, about, so all, all my details are there. I won't bother uh, parroting them. Um, and, uh, and the code that I'm going to be uh, working with, uh, the, the GitHub link is up at the bottom if anyone's uh, keen enough to check it out and learns better that way than by listening to me act. So today we're going to talk about uh, the WordPress customizer and some advanced stuff that you won't ever um, have read anything about because it's not documented and you're, you're going to be the beneficiaries of a lot of the sweat and pain of me uh, basically reading the source code and figuring out how it worked. Because um, it, like, it's unfortunately undocumented. I hope to help uh, fit, be a part of the solution to that problem, but this is kind of a first step getting some of that knowledge out there. Um, so where this came from, um, so firstly, I just want to ask a question. Who here has ever um, like added a control to the customizer? Okay, so not too many of you, okay. Um, is and so we, we are going to do a like just really breeze through the uh, the introductory stuff to the customizer just to give a little bit of context for some of what I'm going to talk about. But I'm really going to breeze through that stuff uh, pretty fast because uh, that's information that's pretty readily available out there, and you can you can follow up and do some learning about that stuff after this. So um, so what we're going to um, get into first is how the customizer works. But first, before we even do that, I'm just going to um, switch out of here for a second. Okay. And we're going to, I'm just going to show you a couple of things, uh, what we've done on um, WordPress.com in, in the customizer and the, the kinds of, oh, that was not what I wanted to do. All right. Perfect. Um, but, Okay, so um, so this is uh, my own site on WordPress.com, and of course, because I closed that, the internet is not going to cooperate with me, right? Perfect. So I'm not even going to bother showing that. Back to the presentation. We uh, we we have we have um, custom design tools on WordPress.com as an upgrade we sell. So there's a custom fonts module, a custom colors module, and a custom CSS module. And I'm just going to try refreshing that. Oh, it's not proxy. Okay, there we go. So, uh, so the colors tool, again, it's, it's uh, more of an advanced control. You can just um, choose a palette and it immediately applies on your site, right? So this isn't your standard customizer control that's like a text input or a drop down or a select button, right? This is um, a little more advanced. Again, here, here we have to do some rendering. We can't use a select element because it's, um, you can't use a select element. And we've also, because uh, you have to render the font, right? You can't um, do that in a normal select element. And so we actually had to roll our own this way. Um, so, so again, this all takes uh, effect instantly. Uh, as you can see, we've also, like, on WordPress.com, we've, like, reskinned um, the customizer itself. Um, and so and then there's a CSS module, right? We made it a two-panel thing. I'm not going to get into all of our motivations for that, but. Um, because it's JavaScript, you can do a lot of fun things. But right, if I, and so the CSS editor here, um, right, if I wanted to just you know, make it lighter, right, and that just takes effect immediately, right, because the customizer gives you those, uh, that, that immediate feedback. And so those, those, are, those are just a couple of examples of the kinds of things that I've built and my team has built on WordPress.com where we needed to, um, really dig into the guts of the customizer to, to be able to build this kind of stuff. So that's, um, that's that context. So now let's, we'll just go back to the presentation, and we're going to talk just very briefly about how the customizer works, how it's architected, and how you um, can use it. So right, so this is just a test site that I have. This is using um, right uh, MP6 customizer. Um, and so what you have here is you have a you have an iframe on the front end, right? Of, of the front end, it's inside an iframe, and it's sitting inside. Um, 
it's sitting inside WP admin slash customize.php. So there, that, that front end iframe is kind of sitting inside this admin page. And basically what you have is they, they have the ability to communicate with each other through post message, which is an HTML5 API, which allows uh, more than one window to communicate back and forth, send messages back and forth. And so that's how you get that um, instant feedback, right? Because it's able to, when you change a control, pass that message directly into the other uh, window, which is in this case an iframe. And so that's how you get that um, instant feedback. And sometimes, though, a control that wasn't registered with post message, it'll just actually refresh it um, so that uh, your PHP logic has a chance to uh, modify it. Uh, we'll get a little more into that. So there are basically three components to the customizer. Um, there are sections, right? And it's like uh, these guys. I had a little, uh, a little too much fun with you know, <laughs> building this. Um, I think I used just about every transition they had there. Um, so those are the sections. Uh, controls are inside a section, right? So we'll go a little more strained this time. Um, but, so we got four controls here, right? We got a radio and then three color, um, color controls. And a setting is essentially paired with each uh, control. So for anyone who was in um, Adam's backbone talk earlier, um, essentially the customizer is kind of like runs on a very similar to backbone paradigm. It's kind of like an, a model view model view thing, right? The control is like a view, and a setting is kind of like a model. And so each control renders and interacts with one particular setting. It's kind of like a model. Um, and so even understanding that, right, the customizer was, should actually be written in backbone, but it was released one version before backbone was included in core. So, um, but it, it, it essentially uses a lot of the same kind of thinking and architecture. Um, so yeah, a setting is basically a one single setting, you, and uh, it pairs each one with a control. So um, sections, right, it's a top level grouping of controls, and when you're writing the code, there's an action called customize register, and it, you receive a WP customize object, and that's basically where you uh, do all your setup for the customizer. Right. So you can use that to do add a section, add a setting, add a control, um, and, and that's how you go about adding things for the customizer. So again, we're just going to play through this quickly. All this stuff is readily available online. There's lots of tutorials out there. Right. So you add a section, it gets an ID, title, priority, description. Um, so that's going to be a section. Um, settings. Settings are pretty cool because um, one of the one of the cool things in a setting is uh, a usual paradigm that you have in WordPress is often you'll have uh, an option that you want to use uh, multiple times, right? You want to set like a, kind of like an associated array, right? You want to set uh, multiple things on that option so you're not completely polluting the options table. Um, so but then you have to write a lot of boilerplate, right? To, to get the existing state of that and then add this particular member and then save up the option. Well. Uh, all that boilerplate is abstracted for you in the customizer, so you can just actually use that bracket notation, and it's going to set in the WordPress database the setting, in this case, setting, and but it's going to put this setting's value in the member member of that setting. So that's pretty cool. It takes away all that boilerplate for you. And the type is going to be a theme mod or option. Theme mod is for anything that's theme specific, and option is something that's global. Um, transport, again, I touched on this earlier, refresh or post message. Refresh just means if you change the setting, that front end iframe actually reloads. And so that, that handles all the legacy stuff where you haven't um, set up the post message stuff to, to do the instant, but you do want to set up post message stuff because it's awesome. And so we'll just dive into that very quickly. Um, customize preview init, that's the action that fires on the front end when you're in a customizer section. And here is where you can uh, register your callbacks to react to a um, to a setting change on the front end. So, so basically, um, yeah. So customize preview in it again, um, and wp.customize is the API in, on the JavaScript side in which you do it. It's just helpful to uh, alias it to something shorter. And basically, again, this, this, is a, this is boilerplate code for how to do reacting to a post message event. So when the setting changes in the customizer on the front end, you can react and um, 
react to some new value and, and basically um, immediately update it on the page however it should be updated. Um, so again, the, that's that code. Again, this stuff's all readily out there. We haven't gotten into the good stuff yet. Um, so capability, right? So what, what user capability in WordPress does this does a user need to have in order to interact with the setting? A default value. Uh, of course, we all sanitize uh, all the values that are going into our database. Um, so this is called on uh, before you save. Uh, there's also this sanitize JS callback, which is like really badly named and should actually be called like to JSON. So it's basically um, maybe like some modifications if you need to make any modifications to it before it comes into the customizer as a JavaScript value. Um, so uh, you, you'll almost never need to run into using it, and you'll also be confused about it, so that's helpful. Um, so now, but sometimes you'll have non-standard settings that don't fit neatly into uh, like an option or a theme mod in terms of how you want to save these options. Uh, so a good example of that is um, our CSS editor. We actually save the CSS as a custom post type because uh, it's, it's really cool for your CSS. You can have revision history, right? Because you get that for free when you do post types in WordPress. So we use that. So but that's not an option or a theme mod. So then you have to be able to do, you, you have to be able to run some other kind of code to save and retrieve these values in the customizer. So, right, so some specific type, right? And then, so when you add the setting and you pass in, uh, right, and, and you make the type some weird type, right? It's not, it's not theme mod, it's not option. Um, and then there's, of course, WordPress is generally really good about having hooks. And so here, um, at, this could be, actually should be add filter, but this works the same way. Um, customize update underscore that type, and then you can give it a callback, which receives the value, and then you can do your specific save logic there. Um, and then you can do the same thing for the value itself, right? When you need to get the value into the customizer, right? Um, customize value underscore and your type, and then again, you can uh, do a callback for that where you pass the value back to the customizer. So again, here we would run a WP query to get that um, most recent uh, CSS post and then throw it into the customizer. So, and then controls, right? Controls, again, as I said, they're like the view, and so we associate it, we give it an ID, we associate it with a certain section that it's gonna be in, um, we associate it with a particular setting, right? Because it has to pair up that way. Strangely, uh, this value is settings, plural, and I don't even understand why. But that's what you have to do. If you just say setting, it's not going to work. Um, there's probably a reason for it, and I don't know what that is. And you can give it a label. And then a type. So out, out of the box, WordPress has a type for almost everything you're going to want to use in the customizer. So you can do checkboxes. You can do a radio type. Um, you, can do, you can do a select, right, a drop down. Um, and so on. Um, of course, you can do the default is just input. It'll just be a text input. You can do a text area as well. Drop down pages. So that'll give you a list of pages and drop down. Um, there's even a couple of ones like WP Customize Color Control. That's going to give you a color picker. Um, and then so that takes three arguments. You got to pass WP Customize into it. And there's ones for a file upload as well and image. Uh, so those, those are with core as well. Um, again, the, the, the info for all this stuff is out there. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to build a custom control. So again, WordPress uh, 3.4 was the version that the customizer came out in. So that was before we had the magical new uh, media uploader. And so actually the file and image stuff in the customizer is kind of outdated and crappy. Um, and so you can't access uh, the files from your file library. In, in the customizer, you just basically get this tiny little drop zone for where you can like throw an image and you have no access to your library. So that's not very good. So what we're going to do here is build our own control that uses the 3.5 media uploader, and hopefully, um, hopefully this stuff all actually maybe works tomorrow in the contributor day into uh, getting this into core. Um, so that all the file uploaders are gonna be like this, but this will this will be a good use case to learn how to how to build a custom control. 
So um, WP Customized Control is the class that you need to extend when you're making your own control. Um, so you give it a type, right? So you extend uh, yeah, WP Customized Control, and you give it a type. And so this is going to be pretty key later. So in this case, we're calling it Advanced Upload. Um, in this, cons in this uh, you, you have an onQueue function. The customizer is going to call this just to make sure that your scripts that are associated with this control are queued. And then there's a render content function, which renders uh, the actual HTML content of your control in the customizer. Um, because the customizer is, it, it, it requires JavaScript. It's a JavaScript-driven feature. Um, I actually like to render most of my, if not all, of uh, my control just on the JavaScript side. I don't like to be spitting most of this out um, in PHP. Because then, again, if you were in Adam's talk earlier, you, you, you just get into this thing where you have all your logic maybe living in two places, and it's not very good. Um, so you, you want to keep the rendering logic mostly or entirely on the JavaScript side, because then you can do, it, it, it's just a more elegant way to handle it, a more maintainable way to handle it, and we'll uh, see a little bit of that soon. Um, also, in this, in this class, when you're extending customized control, um, declare any variables that you want to be able to be passed in, right? There was always that final args uh, array that gets passed into the control. So if you want um, any extra arguments to be taken, uh, they need to be declared on, right, in, right in the class for them to be applied. Um, and then again, just like I showed with the color control earlier, you just uh, instantiate a new one, pass it WP Customize, give it an ID, and then pass in the arguments. Um, and that's how you do that. And so, um, so the, the meat of what we're going to talk about today is really on the JavaScript side, how you interact with the customizer JavaScript API. Um, so again, we're going to register a script, give it a name. We're all familiar with this stuff. Um, in this case, customized control is the dependency you need for the customizer. And we're also depending on media views, because that's the, the 3.5 media library stuff. Uh, that just makes sure it gets loaded after, after the media stuff comes in. Um, and then, yeah, so again, standard JavaScript stuff, we start with the closure, right, for the WP variable and jQuery variable, just so we can work with those uh, nice and easily. So everything else uh, in this code example to follow, we'll just assume that it's inside that closure. So again, we set up a convenience variable, API is wp.customize. And so this is, this is where, and then we have to make, on the JavaScript side, um, a constructor. And so, right? WP or API.control constructor dot advanced upload. Right? You remember seeing this earlier when we registered the control on the PHP side. That's where you're using that. And API.control dot extend. So this is kind of like inheritance on the JavaScript side. Right? It's just um, uh, again, you saw this. It, you see this kind of thing on Backbone, right? Model dot view or model dot extend backbone dot view dot extend. So again, this is a very backbone-inspired API, so I uh, see so you inherit from API.control. And then you do a ready function, and this is where the magic happens. The customizer um, calls the ready function when your control is ready to uh, be initiated, rendered, and interacted with. And so this is where you put all your logic to start setting things up for your control. And so when you're in the control, when you're in the, the object context, now you have access to a bunch of stuff. Um, you have um, this.container, which is a jQuery object of the control div. Again, very similar to backbone in a backbone view. You have this dot, uh, dollar sign L as the, as the jQuery object for um, that particular view. In this case, it's this.container. And you can start appending stuff uh, to your view. Um, and so it, again, it's like, like backbone, the setting is kind of like its model, it's attached to this control view. Um, so this dot setting, it's like one of those magic methods that if you call it with no arguments, it just returns the value of the setting at the current state. Or if you prefer being more verbose, this dot setting dot get is the same thing. Um, and then, uh, again, this is how you update the setting. You just pass it a new value, or again, this dot setting dot set new value. And so all you do here is you set the setting, and then in the customizer, it detects whether that setting was a refresh or a post message. 
And if it's a post message, it fires over the appropriate message to the front end iframe. Or if it is a refresh one, it will refresh that iframe and pass the value into that iframe. Um, so that's all you have to do. Um, you don't really have, uh, the customizer takes care of all the hard work of that communication for you. You don't have to um, do any of that logic. So it's just as simple as setting the new setting value when uh, you've interacted with the control to change something. Um, there's also, it's also very event driven. Um, which is the way you generally want to build things in JavaScript. Um, so you can bind to the settings change event, and then again you would call like your your rendering function, right? So you've changed the setting, and now you want to change how um, how the presentation of your control view looks. Um, you can do things like bind to when when you press save uh, in the customizer when when the user clicks save. Uh, again, that fires an event, you can react to it. Again, like I say in this comment here, um, when, when the customizer saves, the, the XHR it sends out doesn't um, give you any useful information back as to what happened. And so if your control is advanced enough that you actually need some data back to say, did it save properly? Was this valid? Do I maybe need to show any user notices uh, about maybe something unexpected happening or some invalid data coming through? or like the user has tried to do something that the control wants to disallow. Um, so at this point, you would have to send your own, um, your own uh, XHR and, and get that information back. So this is, a help. This is when you would want to do that. Um, and when, when the saving is done, you could react to that if you need to. Um, you can, you can bind to the change event across the whole customizer, so when any control changes, you can react to that. And you, receive, and you can also bind, right, so this, this wouldn't be a really great thing, but you could override the setting on any of the settings that have changed. Um, that's especially useful if maybe you have a couple of controls that are pretty tightly bound together, they need to interact with each other, so you can find out what the value of another control is. Here you can get the here you can uh, get a specific setting like the blog name setting, and you just bind to that one. Or if you even needed to, for some reason, get access to one of the other controls, you can do that too. Um, so, um, so I'm gonna just walk you through now um, the code for writing this advanced upload control. Um, it's it's already written, and I'm just going to. Um, walk through it here. So, um, okay, good. All right. And we'll make that a bit bigger. That is also not readable, but we will change that. Okay, so alright. So, so this is how this is what the JavaScript side looks like. Is that readable for everyone? Okay. Um, so again, got a closure here, our API is wp.customize. Um, and we just have the ready function. And at this point, um, we're, we're, we embedded some stuff with HTML5 data attributes. We're just grabbing that for um, right for localization and uh, the, the media type. And then we basically just set up our HTML. Right, we're, we're adding a button, we're adding an image in an image container, and we're just inserting that into the control. Um, we do a handy little underscore shortcut here just to maintain our. Um, to maintain our object context when we execute these various callbacks, which just comes in really handy. Um, and so, basically, I'm just first going to just show you what this control looks like. So it's very simple, right? Um, you can pick an image, and it brings up the Media Explorer, and I just have a bunch of like, nature shots or whatever, and it just um, so imagine this is like a logo uploader, right? So I have it set as a logo here, and set it, and it's right in there. 
And so you can see the, the control is reacting, the front end is reacting instantly because we have it set up through post message. And there really isn't that much code to make this work. So again, we have a button, and it'll render the image when there's uh, currently a valid value. And when we remove it, it just goes back to the button. So, so basically, when we, when we click on that link, we're going to remove the image. When, um, when we click on the button, we're going to bring up the upload dialog. So those are the two, uh, those are the two DOM events we're going to react to. And then we're binding to the settings change event to call the rendering function. And then we're just going to do the initial renderings. The control just got set up. So now if you look at the rendering function, Right, so we get the value of the setting, right? Again, this could have also just been this.setting.get. Same thing. Um, and then if we have a value and the value has a URL aspect, then we right, show the preview thumbnail um, and we hide the button. Or else we show the button and we hide the image container. And that's all there is to the view. Um, so, so that's how that part works. It's a very simple render function. Um, also, the other, the other thing we did here was when we click the button, we call the upload uh, function. And so here's the upload function. Um, when we click the button, if we don't have a media frame yet, we're going to initialize it. And then once we have one, we're going to open it. So here's the init frame. Um, again, this is a bit of like, this is how you make a media, uh, a new media frame. Um, we're not going to get into that API right now, but that is also a not very well documented API. Um, and then we bind to the select event in, um, in the media uploader, and we pick a new image. So what happens there, this is how you do that. I'm not going to, again, it's a bunch of stuff that is not very well documented, but that's how you do it. Uh, we reduce the members of the attachment, because basically it's got like every single attribute of, uh, of an attachment post type. We don't want all of those. We just actually want the ID, the sizes, and the URL. And then we set the setting, which when we set the setting, you remember that starts the whole chain of events where we fire that post message. And then we've, we've bound to that change event, so the control re-renders itself immediately based on the value of that setting. And that is, that is really the entire functionality right there. Again, it's, it's simply expressed, it's pretty easy to follow. Um, again, it's kind of like backbone style. The control is like a view, and the setting is like a model, and it's, it's pretty, pretty powerful stuff. And so, that is all there is to that. Uh, there, so this, this is, I think, the end of all I have, yeah. So that's demo time. And thanks a lot for your attention. The, Git, the GitHub link is there at the bottom. This is kind of like a child team, just so that you can play around with it, um, read the code, and, and see how you do this kind of stuff. And yeah, so I think we have time for questions. What time does this session end? At five. Ten minutes? OK, yes. great. We've got lots of time. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, come in. So I'm kind of used some of the, the coding there in the, the back end work, but there's this thing like a, a nonce that you have to kind of do when you're plugins interacting and yes. text calls. Is this handling this all that stuff by itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the customizer is handling all your nonces for you. So basically, the, so the settings themselves, like it generates and does all the nonce checking for you. And so all you just have to write is, that, is, is the simple code that I showed at the beginning. And it, it just manages all that for you. So it's pretty great that way. Good question. Anyone else? Uh, is there a chance this may have to be rewritten um, <laughs> using that room? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so the customizer is a really great 1.0, um, and it kind of needs a 1.1 or a 2.0. Um, we're we're talking about some stuff in our team on at, at Automatic about maybe tackling that. It's gonna be fun. Um, so, yeah. So if, if if that's something you'd be interested in participating in, come talk to me later, because uh, that might happen. 
because uh, yeah, really, really the the customizers stuff like it it basically duplicates a lot of backbone stuff within it unnecessarily. But again, it it came out a version before we had backbone, so um, so it probably needs that rewrite. But that's going to be painful. Any other questions? Are there any more examples like what you've done? Like if we looked in some of the, I don't know, which theme you were showing that was being customized here? But is there another example like that we could kind of pick apart later? Um, not to my awareness. Um, I've literally never seen anyone show how to build this kind of a custom control. If there is any stuff out there, I'm just completely not aware of it. Um, you can sort of maybe try and read the code for the custom design upgrade, but it's probably going to be hard to follow it's, it's not open source. Um, you can read some of the JavaScript, but yeah. Actually, I don't recommend you read it. I've learned a lot since I wrote most of the earlier stuff, and it's, some of it's really bad. <laughs> um, yeah. On that first example, yeah, never mind. Um, on the first example you showed, it had a really cool blue sidebar on the right side. Right. Did you do that just by restyling the customizer.php, rescanning it, or is that how it, just different because it was on the so on, so on WordPress.com with the blue sidebar and like the double panel, um, or so it's on WordPress.com. We 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 reskinned it. We just moved stuff for like basically after the customizer. So it's some some CSS and some JavaScript. We moved stuff around. We changed the interaction. Uh, we thought that it was better. Uh, and I still think it's better. Yeah, very uh, uh, I, I like it a lot. So again, that's the kind of stuff that we will maybe try and work with the core team in the future to, to bring to .org. Uh, there's some accessibility stuff that we need to tackle with that because it's a bit interesting, but it's fun. Um, yeah, so I mean, the, cu the, the customizer's UI isn't really, really constrained as it is right now. It needs to grow more flexible for a lot of other more advanced controls to work, and that's why we do this. But yeah, that's the fun part about JavaScript. You can just do stuff and change stuff, right? Anyone else? If not, uh, if you have more questions and want to pick my brain about the customizer or any of this JavaScripty kind of stuff, feel free to talk to me later. Uh, I guess we'll call it a wrap. Thanks for listening.